Hello, I'm Katarzyna Bojarska from the Institute of Nature Conservation, Polish Academy of Science, and we are hosting today uh, Jennifer Havlau from from the Institute of Wildlife Biology and Game Management at Boku Vienna. We are today together in the southern Poland, close to Opole region. And we are here for a very strange reason, and the reason is golden jackal. The golden jackal is a mid-sized canid, who is um, size-wise in the middle of wolf and fox, but closer to fox, only a little bit taller than a fox. And the difference between foxes, for example, is the tail. It is much shorter um, when you look at the jackal than uh, it is in foxes. And um, the weight of a jackal is approximately 10 to 12 kilograms, while a fox maybe has 6 to 10 kilograms, and a wolf is much larger and heavier, of course, has up to 40, 45 kilograms. They walk on their own feet uh, from the southern areas uh, of the Balkans mostly in Europe to the more northern and western areas. So we have records in new countries, like here. So at the moment in these countries like Poland we have first records, so like single records scattered all over the country, but it's not many, many, it's a few, and now we try to investigate that. So the jackal is a very generalist species, so basically the important thing is food availability. However, there are certain preferences that seem to be there, and mm -hmm. like for example wetlands or shrubby areas uh, where, where you have a dense vegetation where they can hide during the day and search food during the night or in, at dawn and dusk. So, so it is um, very diverse and they can live in human-dominated landscape if they have enough cover. They live in families. They are monogamous, so a pair mm -hmm. is bonding and then once a year, at the beginning of May, they have uh, their young. They, they have their offspring. Yeah. Okay, so we are very lucky to be exactly here because this is the place where we actually have the first, one of the first golden jackal families established in Poland. So Jennifer, since you are the, the act like European expert on golden jackals, please tell me how can we find them? How can we find the golden jackal families? So that is really a good question because they have something very typical. They like to howl. So we try to stimulate. We drive on several points. We play a certain howling, and mm -hmm. they tend to respond. So we can confirm groups. Okay, because hearing the howling, you can hear if there is one jackal or more jackals. And uh, yes, that is tricky to say how many, uh -huh. but um, uh, we can confirm that it's a group or not. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and then besides howling in the darkness, uh, is there any less exhausting methods to <laughs> try to detect them? Uh, we have, of course, the camera trapping is, is there as well. It's a very typical uh, method and also uh, I think it's important that maybe we have a lot of camera traps out in the field already, like hunters or everybody, that they send these to you and, and say, maybe that is a jackal. So, so that is something, a source that we use a lot. And okay. we, we find jackals mm -hmm. like this in new areas a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's much uh, better than just uh, saying people saying, ah, I think I saw a golden yes. jackal. Because once you have this p you picture... You have to prove. Yeah, uh, and that is very good to have a picture mm -hmm. and not just, I saw something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then now is the time to talk about our first method, and uh, this is a very exciting for me. That uh, is a, a very new method that we are using for the jackal research. Um, we have specially trained dogs that mm -hmm. search for the scat. And then, of course, uh, you as human, you walk with the dogs, and the dogs search the area, find the scat, and we can learn many things from the scat. But you have also experience in that, uh, what, what can we learn from the scat? We can take the genetics, we can look at the family structures, hopefully, and this is what we want to try. Here. So these dogs, they, they are trained in a way that they will show only a jackal scat and no other scat. Uh, yes, Th there is different kinds uh, of trained dogs, but uh, it's the, the, the best ways they are trained for jackal scat, yeah. And awesome. then they will show you, the, because why are we using that? Because as humans, 
it is hard to differentiate between, for example, fox scat and jackal scat. They are very much uh, size alike um, and also maybe a dog scat. So there is a lot of overlapping. We as humans, we don't know. So we use the sense of a dog. They have very good senses. Mm -hmm. And this is what we use. This is a method. This is a new method in, in our research. Yeah. And we have three such dogs yeah. with us here in Poland. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So yesterday we had positive answer. They were howling from somewhere around here. Then you said we could try to record the, the sounds. So, so yes, yeah. so we yeah. also have some uh, small audio devices. They're inside this box and we will mount them to the, to the tree. And <clears throat> also the camera traps inside here. And now we're searching a good place for the traps. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. We could stay somewhere here. So maybe we're so hanging yeah. between the the trees here? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. this looks fine, yeah. So this is tree could be the camera tree and yeah. here we dig. Okay. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Now we're pulling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we suspect that they eat and carcasses from time to time, right? Then yeah. I don't know much. So yeah, this this should be a very good carcass smell, and it's also fish. So as long yeah, as I know, they should know. Mm. It's really like and it. And why do we dig the hole? <laughs> well, it's uh, it's an old trapper's method for coyotes mostly. Mm. We know it from the oh. we know it from from the states that this is how they trap them. They they make the because so they spend a little a bit of time trying to get into the smell. And they also they also actually dig and uh, the the food under the ground, so it's kind of their behavior nice. to, to search under. Okay. Well, let's see. So let's go okay. to the next one. <laughs> yeah. now at the end of our first field work here in Poland and it was really exciting we had a lot of stuff to do so we did um, we did search for skets we mounted camera traps uh, and yeah we did acoustic howling so Kasia what is the future what does the future bring well the project is not over it's gonna last till the end of this year at least uh, so we, we have to do, we have to collect a lot of more material, more howling spots, more uh, photo trap material and more scats. Mm. The scats are the very important part. Mm. Well, and then is the analysis part and uh, where we actually try to, uh, to have the, the information, every information that we can. So we will analyze the audio material from uh, the recordings of the howlings. Mm -hmm. And we will analyze the scats, uh, and thanks to that, we will learn what they eat, especially here. Uh, what uh, what is their genetic identity relationship? How many they are, and what are the parasites that they carry? And I'm really looking forward to meeting you again uh, for our next field work. Yes, which is gonna be in a few months. In a few months. Yes. That's really good. Yes. Okay, see you then. Okay, see you. Goodbye. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>